Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating two Christmas themed home decor DIYs both inspired by items I saw at Kirkland's. Now I thought that this galvanized beaded tree and this wood plank Christmas art were so beautiful and I wanted to recreate the looks using mostly Dollar Tree items for you all. Now for your convenience, I provided the list of supplies and tools used to make these projects in the description box below. Now I am so very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hello and welcome back to my fantastic subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now if you are a new visitor to my channel today and you love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's jump right into these projects. Now the first project is a wood plank look Christmas art piece. Now here is the inspiration photo for this project. Now I absolutely love the rustic look of the wood panels in this piece and the glitter Christmas gives it that little hint of holiday cheer. Now this piece was priced at $84.99, but I knew I could recreate it using Dollar Tree and other inexpensive supplies. Now for this project, we'll start with this Merry Christmas sign from the Dollar Tree. And we'll also need some foam board from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing we're going to do is work on the sign and I'm going to start re removing all of those tags. And then we can start cutting the sign apart. Now I, you can use an X-Acto knife, but I found that using just some regular old sharp scissors will work great. Now we will be using the Christmas portion of this sign for this project. So now we're going to seal in that glitter and we're going to be using this Mod Podge. Now what you want to do is apply a layer to the entire front of the sign and you also want to put a light layer on the back as well. Now once that's done, you can go ahead and sit the piece to the side to dry. So now grab your foam board and we're going to apply a very light coat of Mod Podge to the entire surface. Now this will help seal in that paper surface and minimize any bowing. Now this foam board piece has been cut to 20 inches by 14 and a half. Now once that foam board is nice and dry, it may bow just slightly, but I already plan to place paint sticks on the back to make everything nice and flat. Now I'm just going to place one of the paint sticks on each side and I want to apply it with some hot glue. And now that they are applied, you'll see that the edge is nice and even. So now we can start marking where we want our planks to go. So you just take a ruler and what you want to do is make a mark every two inches on the top and bottom of the board. And now you're just going to draw a line and connect all of those marks you made. And here are all of my lines and we'll use those as a guide. Now to make the planks, I will be using this antique Waverly wax and I'll also use some clear wax that I'll mix with this elephant gray acrylic. Now I'm just going to place some in some bowls and make sure to mix three parts clear to one part paint. So now we can start adding our planks to the foam board and I'm going to be using this painter's tape to make sure that the planks are nice and even. And then take your chip brush and you can start applying that antique wax lightly to the board and just use your chip brush to make a nice wood texture. And then go ahead and remove that tape and you can apply it to another plank on the board and you could just add these in a few random places on the board. And now that we're done with the antique color, what we're going to do is we're going to take that gray color and we're going to apply it in the same way and just a few planks on the board. Now 
And once your gray planks are done, I added a little bit of the darker gray to the clear wax. And I'm just going to dry brush this on to one of the planks so it looks like it's an aged white color. And you can even dry brush on the antique wax too. It's all up to you. Now when they are just about dry, you can take some acrylic white paint and I'm just going to dab it onto a fresh brush and I want to lightly go over the entire board with the grain to give it a nice weathered look. And now when that's done, just set it to the side to dry. So now we can work on the frame trim. Now I'm gonna take a scrap of that foam board left over and I'm gonna make some marks um, an inch and a quarter apart on the short ends. And then I'm gonna draw a line using the ruler to connect the marks. Now we're gonna need a total of four strips as shown here. So now you can use your ruler and your X-Acto knife to cut the strips. Now we'll also need uh, four quarter inch strips as well to accent our frame. Now you just wanna make sure two of your frame pieces are 21 inches and the other two are 15 and a half inches. So now I wanted minor corners on a frame, so I'm taking a square piece of paper, folding it into a triangle, and I'm gonna use that to cut the angle and mark the angle for my corners. And I'm gonna repeat this for all of the corners of my frame pieces. And here are all my pieces nice and marked. So now you just take your ruler and your X-Acto knife and you wanna trim those pieces as you mark them. So now that they are all trimmed, we can take our quarter inch pieces and what we want to do is hot glue them down the center of each one of those frame pieces. And then once those are all applied, you just want to trim off the excess. So now that the pieces are all nice and trimmed, go ahead and test fit the pieces on the board just to make sure that they will fit properly. Then if everything looks good, just start to put the frame together by hot gluing all of the corners. So now that your frame is all assembled, we could just go ahead and grab our board. And now what you're going to do is just apply hot glue all around the board and place your frame right on top to secure it. So now we can finally add our Christmas sign right on top. We're just gonna make sure it's nice and centered and then add hot glue to the back and press it into place. Now my planks didn't stand out as much as I would have liked, so what I'm gonna do is lightly outline the planks with this black Sharpie. Now ideally, you should do this before adding your frame, but this was a last minute decision that I decided to add. Also, I found that lining them freehand looks so much more natural than using a ruler, and you can also dry brush over the lines to blend them in when you are done. And here is our Christmas sign in all its shimmer. I just love how this turned out. Now, I love how this foam board can easily be crafted into this beautiful piece, and it really makes a statement. 
and this sign from the Dollar Tree was the perfect fit for this project. Now, it's so hard to believe that you can have this look for under $3. What a great deal. Now, the second project is a galvanized metal look beaded Christmas tree. Now, here is the inspiration photo for this project. Now, this piece caught my eye with the metal look, and combined with the beads, it really looks rustic and high-end. Now, this piece was marked at $29.99, but I knew I could recreate it using my faux metal technique along with a few Dollar Tree supplies and some beads. Now for this project, we'll start with these long skewers from the Dollar Tree. And we'll also need some poster board from the Dollar Tree that we'll make into this metal looking sheet. Now I also will be using some 16 millimeter beads and I got these in bulk from Amazon. So we're going to start by creating this metal sheet from the poster board. Now all I did was spray paint the board with silver spray paint, then dab it with a paper towel when wet. Now I'll link the full tutorial in the upper right hand corner of this video and also in the description box below. Now to make sure we cut out our piece for the cone evenly, we're going to cut a piece of string the length of that short side of the poster board to use as a guide. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift my board around and I'm just gonna hold one end of the string in the corner of that short side of the board and the other end holding a pencil and I'm gonna draw a curve from that corner to the other edge of the board. And then just cut that shape out with scissors. Now you just wanna lay that piece nice and flat and in order to form your cone, you just wanna roll it up very tight. And then you wanna adjust your cone so that the seam is straight. And once it's straight, just apply some painter's tape in place to hold it. Now once you're satisfied with the shape, go ahead and you can grab your hot glue and secure that edge seam in place. Now you do want to make sure that you apply it to the inside loose edges as well of the cone. Now we will be dividing this into four pieces. So my tree measures about 22 inches. So I'm going to cut it in four sections about five and a half inches each. So I'm just going to measure the bottom section first and I want to mark it all the way around with a pencil. And then I wanna draw a line and connect all of my marks together. And then I wanna go ahead and repeat the process for the next two rows until you have four equal sections. And now I'm just gonna take a marker and I'm just making the line easier to see. Now in order to cut these apart without damaging creasing or folding the cone you want to stuff it with some paper real firm and then take your exacto knife with a really sharp blade and you want to carefully cut the sections apart now when you remove it you want to make sure you remove any gaps in the layers with hot glue and then just make your two last cuts And now you have your four sections. Now in order to create that one inch gap between the layers, I'm gonna be cutting a half an inch off each of the cut edges. Now you just wanna make your marks and you wanna stuff it with paper once again. And then what you wanna do is you wanna trim off half inch of all of the cut ends. Now you'll trim off both sides of the center pieces and one side of the top and the bottom. And now we have all of our ends trimmed down. So now we can add our skewers, but first we're going to mark four equal corners on that bottom piece of the tree with a marker. And then you can add some hot glue to one of the skewers and place it inside that bottom piece and you want to align it with one of those marks you made. And then add those other three skewers on the other three markings and this is what it should look like. 
So now take that next section of your tree. You want to mark that in quarters as well and then slide it onto the skewers, making sure you line up those back seams. Then you want to make sure your spacing is nice and neat, about an inch apart, and then secure that piece into place along those quarter markings that you made with hot glue. And then you want to repeat this for your third piece. Now for the top, you just want to measure and then trim down the top of the skewers. Now once you mark it and trim it down, um, what you want to do is you want to add a generous amount of hot glue to the top. And then once that's added, you can put your top on and you want to make sure that everything is aligned um, with the seams. And now that this is done and setting, we can put it to the side and start working on our beads. Now these are 16 millimeter beads and the link to these are in the description box below. Now to paint these, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna string them on this wire that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now once these are all strung, what I'm gonna do is take them out to paint and I'll be using this Krylon Burgundy spray paint or you can use acrylic paint and paint these by hand. And here are my beads all painted. Now go ahead and you can just remove them from the wire. Now I did notice that the inside will be seen inside of our cone. So make sure you go ahead and give it a spray of silver paint on the inside before adding your beads. Now while that dries, I'm gonna start stringing our beads together that will be added to our tree. You just wanna cut a piece of wire and start adding the beads so they'll fit each section. Now I found that the bead count would be about eight beads for the top, 14 for the middle, and 22 for the bottom. Now once all the beads are strung, I'm going to be painting the skewers on my tree with this dark brown color. Now you just want to carefully paint all the sides of the exposed skewers with a fine brush. Now you do want to save this step for last because when you paint the inside of your cone, the spray paint can also hit the skewers. So make sure you do this after you paint the inside of your tree cone. And here's everything painted. So now that they're dry, we can go ahead and start adding those beads. Now you just want to wrap them around the skewers and you want to twist the wire to secure them firmly into place. And then you just want to add a few dots of hot glue under the beads to keep them from shifting. Now you can clip the end of the wires when this section is done and you will repeat this for the other two sections. Now once they are all added, I am just going to touch up my beads um, where I have missed some spots because sometimes when you spray paint them it can have some exposed wood So we're just going to touch that up So now what I'm going to do now I didn't have a star so I'm going to cut one out of foam board So once I draw it out on a piece of foam board I'm just going to cut it out with my exacto knife And then what I'm gonna do is paint it the same color as my beads. And now all you have to do is add your star on the top. And all you have to do is place a generous amount of that hot glue and sit that star right on top and put some hot glue on the back near the bottom as well. And once that dries, you're all done with this project. So now you can place your beautiful creation on display. Now, how amazing did this turn out? Now this two foot tall tree looks absolutely stunning and I really love that it looks like it's made from metal. Now I really love how both of these projects turned out today, but you guys have to let me know which one of these Kirkland dupes was your favorite today. Let me know in the comments below. Now 
a listen. If you love DIYs on a budget, give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Thank you so much for visiting and checking out my tutorial today. If you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below and turning on that notification bell. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all next time.